Yo, yo, today we be pimping. Pimping workouts, that is. We're gonna look at Casimir Kaskisuo's first off-season workout, and we're gonna pimp it out a little for him. I don't think I'm a very good pimp, to be honest. No. Welcome to Goalie Training Pro TV. I'm glad you're here because what I do is I help you decipher the actual science of goalie training from all of the gimmicks that are out there. So if you are new here, make sure you subscribe. If you missed the last video, it was all about the best type of off ice training shoe for goalies and what type of shoe you definitely need to avoid at all costs. So if you missed that, I'll pop a link here. And it probably also means that you haven't hit the bell. The bell gives you notifications as soon as a new video is released, so you never miss another one. But it's great to meet you. My name's Maria Mountain. I am an exercise physiologist by trade. Casimir Kaskisuo is a professional goalie by trade. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at a video that he uploaded with his first off ice workout of the off season. And you know, again, there's lots that goes into it, and I'm sure there was lots of behind the scenes things that took place with his trainer and assessment and, you know, history and all that stuff. So please take it in the spirit it's intended. I'm not trying to say, oh, this guy did his crappy workout or his trainer's no good because I know there's specific reasons why they did all the exercises that they did based on working one-on-one -on -one with with each other. But I also know that a lot of you are gonna look at that and say, oh, well, this is what an NHL goalie does and I wanna be really good, so I should do that as well. And so we're gonna look at sort of the good, the bad, and the little bit ugly, and just so you can take that in and maybe be able to evaluate for yourself. So this isn't a, I'm not dumping on anybody, not throwing anybody under the bus. I'm just looking at it as an exercise physiologist and telling you how I might do it differently given the phase of the off season. Okay, okay, we good? All right, let's go. We're gonna get in some power today. What, what, what? Did he just say we're gonna train power on the first day of the off season? I think we better go to the whiteboard and sketch this out. So I had to put on my science door glasses because I take the science of periodization quite seriously. <laughs> and, and again, there may be some, I don't know everything. Shocking, I know. Maybe there is a new periodization scheme that starts with power. I could be totally wrong, but in Maria land, this is what sort of the periodization scheme looks like or the development scheme kind of looks like over the off season. Come in just a little closer so you can really see. Let's think of it as a pyramid, shall we? Down here at the bottom of the pyramid would be mobility plus stability. So the first thing that I look at when I'm working with a goalie in the off season is can they move? Can they stabilize? Because if we don't have those things, then we're building strength on a shaky foundation. We're building um, stronger compensation patterns, which really is just setting us up for a worse injury down the road. Let me know too in the comments below if you want me to kind of walk through this in more detail. This is just really a quick overview, but if you want me to kind of go step by step of the different, uh, you know, what types of things we might do in each of these phases, let me know. I, I can help you out. So the next level is functional strength. And functional strength the way a goalie needs functional strength. So that will be frontal plane strength um, and stability. Can I produce force while I'm stabilizing? Can I produce force in some awkward positions? From there though, we will move to uh, include like a max strength. 
So it's not to say that goalies only ever work on functional strength. We will still do max strength exercises. You know, we'll still do trap bar deadlifts and some front squats and, you know, those types of single leg squats to really build that maximum strength. And that kind of comes here. At the top of the pyramid is power. That says power, people. It doesn't look very much like power. <laughs> trust me on this but it's not to say that oh, okay so uh if the off season's four months long we spend a month on mobility and stability a month on functional strength a month on max strength and a month on power and boom we're into the season it's not like that they, they do intertwine and there is a progression but the take-home point is that power is the top of the pyramid <laughs> and so we don't really typically start our off-season training with power um Let's dive in though and see, because sometimes people say, oh, we're gonna do power, but then it actually doesn't turn out to be power. So let's not judge too harshly, but I just want you to have this picture in your mind. Let's dive in and see what, you know, what some of the exercises are, and then we can comment on it a little more with a little more information, shall we? We're gonna definitely get mobilized. Did he just say we're gonna get mobilized? Tempo, body control. All right, so I like that. I like this idea, body control and tempo. In my mind, I'm seeing, um, you know, like a frontal plane squat lateral with a controlled tempo, maybe a five seconds eccentric or five seconds lowering, maybe a, an iso hold at the bottom, like a three second iso hold. Because when we slow things down, we really force the goalie to show us their strategies. You know, when things happen quickly, like if we just do a lunge, you know, and, and back, well then it's a little, it can be a little hard to see what their compensation patterns are. When we slow it down or we make them balance and stabilize, it magnifies those compensations and then we can fix them early in the off season so that as we add those other layers, we're not adding them to sort of a faulty foundation. So I, I really like the sound of that. Ding. Then we're going to get in some power work, lateral power, forward moving, backward moving power. We're going to work on some kettlebell cleans. And then he comes back to some power, frontal plane, forward and back power, kettlebell, kettlebell cleans. So that's sort of a lot going on, not something typically we do the first day of our off-season training. But let's again, let's dive in, see what it looks like. Okay, so that one is a bit of a, is calisthenics. Um, I'm not sure if it's part of the power um, training or if this is just still part of the dynamic, maybe a part of the dynamic warm up. Um, but that's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a calisthenic, which is really just like a body weight stamina type strategy. So not, uh, this wouldn't be a power exercise, the, the jumping jacks or the um, running, you know, to reverse lunge, but it's a, it's a way to get your energy system revved up and, and working a little harder so again maybe that is sort of the strategy or the desired outcome for the, this drill okay so now i see what he's talking about when he says lateral power front to back power and kettlebell clean so he's adding in sort of a kettlebell clean although um it's not really that explosive right it's a little bit more of kind of a lift a little lift and flip but at this point even the way the tempo so at this point in the off is what i'd way rather see is just a squat lateral with that slow tempo i talked about to get that connective tissue under tension to work on some tissue remodeling and like i said before to see where these compensation patterns are or what how this goalie wants to move and if there's some sort of biomechanical issues we need to check or just muscle recruitment issues we need to clean up that's our chance to do that even using this tempo um, I would like it even better if if when Casimir came back up he had to balance and he had to stabilize because at least that pulls in you know we talked about the foundation is mobility and stability okay well that pulls in you know some stability some dynamic stability which is probably a little notch ahead but I would like it a lot better the fact that it's just kind of you know um continuous dynamic I don't think that gives him really a chance to see how Casimir is moving um and to uh, which then again helps inform you of what you need to work on next and how he might want to modify the next workout so 
not a bad combo. I think it would be a fantastic combo and maybe in the functional strength, again, with that stability, um, that balance in between. And probably too, if you did it a lot more explosively, like using a kettlebell and a load that he really had to rip, that would fit in really well in the power phase. And, and so let's keep watching. From there he's moving into a knee down lateral hop uh, and stick. There is a sort of a brief hold. I would like the hold to be longer and maybe not under fatigue. So when he goes from the la lunge lateral to lunge reverse, you hear uh, Katsuki Suo say, oh my, like my legs are cramping or something like that. And then we're going into a little bit more of an explosive power exercise. So I probably would maybe put in a core stabilization drill in between, let his legs rest up and then get that uh, lateral stability. Maybe the, maybe the, the go, one of the goals of this workout is to do some local muscular stamina work. And so then I take it all back. That would be fine. But I'd still probably like to see him hold that landing position a little bit longer just to evaluate what his dynamic stability is like. Yeah, I'm thinking like a basketball player you're back there, you know, you got to kind of make a stick angle. This exercise I actually really like and I think it fits really well in that base of the pyramid. So it's, uh, he's added a couple of things and sometimes you need to do that too, just to use your time more efficiently. But it's a step lateral with a mini band above the knees. And the idea is that that's going to help strengthen, uh, the ad abductors of the hip and maybe the hip lateral rotators a little bit. And then he's doing a little rotary stabilization. So he's holding that bungee, which is trying to pull him back. So he has to just statically stabilize as he goes through it. I really like this exercise. I think it's, I think it's great. Um, probably I wouldn't mind seeing a little bit more coaching. I think his tempo might be a little bit quick, especially when he's recovering that leg back. Um, so the trail leg on the way back, just to control that a little bit more. I think put those, those muscles under a little bit more tension is a good idea at this point. And then too, like where should the hands be? The, the further out they are, the more rotary control is required. Um, he's got them in pretty close, which again is probably good. It's early in the off season. We don't want to put a whole bunch of rotary load on the torso. So this one, this one gets a ding, ding, ding. I know the question you've got. I've got the same question, honestly. It's like, if a guy is already playing in the NHL, should or like or pro I think he's playing in Scandinavia this year but uh, playing pro hockey at a high level should they be changing anything in their training it's like what like I'm a professional goalie <laughs> like I get paid so like why should I change anything drop a comment below let me know if you think they should be constantly looking for a better way or if they should be like nope like this is what got me here I'm just gonna stay doing the same thing over and over again I'm interested to hear what you think this rope work, I don't mind. I would keep the volume quite low because it is ballistic by nature. You can't do, use the rope and not have it be ballistic. I probably prefer the just the single arm work. So staying nice and stable, getting some single arm work. But again, I would keep the volume pretty low on each side. Post-workout cool down. You know, I, I'm not going to scrutinize this very much. One thing I did notice um, when he's doing his hip flexor stretch, he's leaned forward like that. And what that does is it actually um, can kind of shorten your hip flexor a little bit. So there's no benefit. There's no need to lean forward. You just want to stay up tall if you can, shorten your stride a little bit, tuck your hips underneath so that you feel that stretch. You hear that? Yeah, static dynamic stretch, stretch before, static yeah. after. Uh, this is a great example of meaning in and meaning out. So even Jamie, he gets it right. He says, you know, before you work out, don't static stretch or during a workout, don't static stretch, do dynamic stretching. But after a workout, you can static stretch. That's sort of a, a gross oversimplification of it, but it, it, in the essence, it's right. But then Kasky says, oh, do you hear that? Static stretching's bad. And it isn't. We don't do a lot of it because frankly, we have better techniques to help improve a goalie's mobility, which is different from a goalie's flexibility. What we want is strength at length. What we want is control in all those crazy awkward positions. We have better ways of getting it but we will still use static stretching. You can still static stretch as part of your pre-skate, pre-workout, pre-game warm-up, 
but you want to make sure you follow it with dynamic movement drills because that will sort of negate any loss in peak power production. Over 600 calories in 48 minutes. So this kind of ties into what I was thinking earlier and, and suggesting that maybe Jamie's designing this a little bit to get a bit more um, sort of low grade stamina work. So he looks at his Apple watch and he's like, wow, that's 600 calories in 48 minutes or whatever. So that is more of a stamina workout. When we do strength workouts, we're not burning through calories at that rate because we're not getting our heart rate up uh, that high when we're working on, you know, building strength or building stability. So there you have it. There's some things that uh, he did really, really well. Some things that I might do differently, which isn't a knock. I'm sure in my programs, there are other physiologists out there who are like, oh, I'd, I'd probably do this differently. So, you know, there's, there's not one way. If there was one way, everyone would do it exactly the same. If you have always just trained yourself or done a bit of this and a bit of that, and you're interested to just see, okay, like, how big of a difference does it actually make doing something that's really like goalie specific, you know, from a science perspective and how the body works perspective, then you know what, go to your app store, type in butterfly challenge. It's a really short, super simple goalie specific mobility program. Most goalies get two to four inches wider butterfly flare in two weeks. Test it for yourself and see how you feel on the ice and after you skate, and the next day get out of bed. I think you'll notice a big difference. So, and it's free. So go check that out. I'll also put a link in the description for you. Do not forget to subscribe and to hit that like button. Some people say to smash the like button. I don't think you need to smash the like button. I don't think it's like one of those things at the fair where you like with a sledgehammer and the thing goes if you hit it hard enough. I don't think I get more likes effectively if you hit it harder. Maybe we should do an experiment. But anyway, for now, I think it suffices if you just click the like button. And then if you want to see a nice goalie specific workout that you can do every day, you don't have to do it every day. You could do it every other day, but it's a complete quick little workout that kind of targets all these different areas. Uh, I'm gonna put a link to it here on the end screen so you can check that out next. And I will catch you next time. I promise not to ever pimp again. Actually, I might pimp again. If you want me to pimp other workouts like this, let me know. See ya. This dope. This dope.